my nymphs, my name is Michelle, and this is my betta fish warrior. Welcome back to Igrisil. Today I am going to be talking about Billy Milligan. If you don't know who this is, he is a individual who was said to have dissociative identity disorder, and Dr. Todd Grande is a very, very smart individual and much smarter than I am. He has a degree and so we should believe him, right? But I'm so confused because I read the book, The Many Minds of Millie, Billy Milligan, and I also watched the documentary, the docuseries on Netflix, and I cannot see him faking. Like, I don't understand. Like, and especially since, like, in this video, freaking Dr. Todd Grande is talking about how like DID might not even be real at all. He's kind of making fun of his alters and it's like, bro, why would he lie and make up this elaborate scheme just so that he could be in a psychiatric ward instead of prison? Like that's not even that big of a difference. His acting skills are on par. Like this isn't some dissociated stuff. This is some real, like this is like, unbelievable. I very much recommend you watch the documentary on Netflix and if you don't feel like doing that then at least watch like a, like the trailer because it's very insightful as to who he is. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn the bell on if you're feeling risky. What do you guys think Become a channel member, it starts at 99 cents. You get a shout out in every single video. You get early access to my videos and many more other perks. Thank you so much for watching this video as always and enjoy. Did Billy Milligan have DID? No, not in my opinion. I would like to disagree with my bachelors of social work Dr. Todd Grande, that I think he actually did have DID. Like, there were hours and hours and hours and hours of it recorded, his experiences of switching alters, and it was clear that he went through severe childhood trauma. I think that one of his alters, probably Reagan, was a narcissist, sociopath, whatever you, whatever it was they diagnosed him with, but the individual as a whole did have DID. And it's like, you can be a narcissist and have DID, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was gonna say dissociated, but she's actually just a narcissist. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um. <clears throat> well, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Billy Milligan? This case is covered in a docu-series on Netflix titled Monsters Inside the 24 Faces of Billy Milligan. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll go through the background of this case, including the timeline of the crimes and offer my analysis. Billy Milligan was born in Miami Beach, Florida on February 14, 1955, Valentine's Day. His father was named Johnny Morrison and his mother was Dorothy Pauline Sands. Billy had an older sister and a younger brother. Billy almost died when he was one month old, but he was able to recover. Billy's father appeared to have a variety of mental health issues. He struggled with his intake of alcohol and gambled excessively. He may have had schizophrenia. He brought an end to his life by carbon monoxide poisoning in January of 1959. After Billy's father died, his mother moved the family to a farm in Amanda, Ohio. She married a man that she had been married to before. They divorced about a year later. She then moved to Circleville, Ohio. She met Chalmer Milligan in 1962. They would marry in October of 1963. Chalmer had difficulty regulating his intake of alcohol, and he was controlling and violent. He routinely mistreated Billy. Later, this would be connected to Billy's potential pathology. The family moved to a farm in Lancaster, Ohio. After an incident involving Chalmer being violent, Billy's brother threatened Chalmer with a knife and forced him out of the house. Chalmer never returned. Billy would have numerous encounters with law enforcement over the course of his life. In 1972, Billy was arrested for committing a sexual assault. In 1975, he was charged with robbery. He went to prison until 1977. There, he was diagnosed with schizoid features, so he probably appeared to be isolated, withdrawn, and distant. 
He committed additional sexual assaults and robberies in 1977 against three victims on the Ohio State University campus. The police were able to identify Billy as the perpetrator because one of the victims identified him from mugshots and he left a fingerprint in the car of one of his victims. He was arrested at his residence. During the arrest, Billy warned the officers not to kick a box or it would blow up, suggesting there was a bomb in the box. As it turns out, the box just had wires in it. Billy was charged with 10 felonies and taken to jail. The police found the gun used in the crimes and items that could be connected back to the victims. Billy was assigned two public defenders. The attorneys were described as intelligent, determined, and creative. They noticed that Billy seemed to maintain a clueless expression while in jail. He was childlike, as if he didn't know what was going on. He wasn't aware of the crimes he committed. The public defenders believed that Billy had some type of mental health issue, which could be used as a defense. Not long after being incarcerated, Billy pulled a urinal off of the wall and tried to harm himself with it. In addition to unexpected plumbing renovations, Billy created a variety of drawings. Clinicians believe the artwork had some type of special significance, like it may have revealed multiple personalities. Billy was assessed by mental health clinicians to determine if he was mentally capable of assisting in his own defense. One therapist said Billy had schizophrenia. Another claimed that he had multiple personality disorder, which is now referred to as dissociative identity disorder, or DID. Billy waived his right to a jury trial. He was found not guilty by reason of insanity by a judge. Billy was ordered to receive mental health care and sent to a facility in Athens, Ohio. He was treated like a celebrity there. He was allowed to leave from time to time, unsupervised, and sell his paintings to make money. His privileges were revoked after he was accused of crimes against female patients. He was transferred to a facility in Lima, Ohio. Like most clinicians then and now, the mental health professional who treated him there did not believe that DID existed. Billy was diagnosed with schizophrenia with dissociative episodes, antisocial personality disorder, and drug dependence. Billy was transferred to Dayton, Ohio when the facility in Lima closed. There he was diagnosed with narcissistic and histrionic personality disorders, as well as antisocial traits. He was then sent to Columbus, Ohio, before making his way back to Athens, which was the first place he was treated after the verdict. By this point, Billy claimed to have 24 personalities. He married the sister of another patient. She was very excited for the opportunity to be with a celebrity like Billy. The marriage ended 51 days later. I guess the excitement wore off. No one can really blame her. She was probably exhausted from the wedding ceremony. She had to say, I do, 24 times. That doesn't even include signing all those marriage certificates. Billy was permitted to live on a farm in the community. He was arrested for vandalism, perjury, and intimidation of a witness. The charges were dismissed. After being transferred back to Columbus, Ohio in 1986, Billy fled from the facility, claiming the clinician who was treating him was trying to harm him. He made his way to Colorado, then to Washington State. He had help from various people. He changed his name, or I suppose one could argue added another personality. Billy started a hot tub company with two other men, pretty much the standard strategy for anyone who escapes from a mental health treatment facility. It's like he was reading right out of the textbook on how to survive as a fugitive. In Washington, he was seen arguing with a man named Michael Madden on September 15, 1986. Madden was never seen again. Billy cashed checks belonging to Madden around the same time. Billy was captured soon after in Miami, Florida. The police did not have enough evidence to make a case against Billy for the murder of Michael Madden. He was returned to Columbus, Ohio. Mental health clinicians declared his personalities were fused and he was freed. Billy Milligan was released from the Ohio mental health system in 1988 and completely discharged in 1991. He moved to California and was treated like a celebrity. James Cameron was interested in making a movie about Billy, but the deal fell through. Billy declared bankruptcy and moved back to Ohio. Billy Milligan would die of cancer in Columbus, Ohio on December 12, 2014. He was 59 years old. Now moving to my analysis. 
Billy Milligan's diagnosis is a highly controversial topic, specifically the DID diagnosis. Some people look at this case and think that he clearly had DID, the diagnosis was correct. Other people believe that Billy scammed the system. He feigned multiple personalities and happened to run into a number of gullible mental health clinicians. Let's take a look at the definition of DID. There are five diagnostic criteria for this disorder in the DSM. One, disruption of identity characterized by two or more distinct personality states. The states are often referred to as alters. Two, recurrent gaps in the recall of everyday events, important personal information, and or traumatic events. Three, the disruption causes clinically significant distress. This is a common criterion we see with many disorders in the DSM. Four, it is not part of a normal cultural or religious practice. And number five, the symptoms are not attributable to substances or a medical condition. Throughout Billy's time in treatment, he initially told the mental health professionals that he had 10 different personalities. Later, they would discover 14 more personalities, which were referred to as the undesirables. This is where we get the 24 total personalities. Let's take a look at the 10 initial personalities that Billy claimed to have. These were recorded in January of 1981. The main personality or core personality is William Stanley Milligan. He's a six foot tall, 26 year old high school dropout who was later referred to as the unfused Billy. Arthur is a 22 year old Englishman who speaks with a British accent. He is emotionless, rational, well-versed in physics, chemistry, and reads and writes in Arabic. Reagan is a 23-year-old Yugoslavian who is an expert on weapons and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Alan is an 18-year-old manipulator who plays the drums, paints, and smokes cigarettes. Tommy is a 16-year-old escape artist who is antisocial and belligerent. He is an electronic specialist who plays the saxophone. Danny is a 14-year-old who is fearful of men. Dave is an 8-year-old who absorbs the suffering from the other personalities. He is sensitive, perceptive, confused and has a short attention span. Christine is a three-year-old English girl who likes to draw butterflies and flowers. Christopher is 13. He plays the harmonica and speaks with a British accent. The last personality of the initial 10 is Adelana. She is a 19-year-old lesbian. She is introverted, cooks, cleans the house, and writes poetry. Many of the descriptions of Billy's personalities sound more like dating profiles. I was waiting for one named Tyler. He is a 23-year-old yoga instructor who likes long walks on the beach, intimate conversation, and candlelight dinners. The other 14 personalities, the undesirables, were generally young men and had a variety of occupations or functions like big game hunter, small time criminal, comedian, imposter, and daydreamer. The most important of the undesirables was the teacher. He was supposed to be the sum of the other 23 personalities fused into one. What's amazing about all these so-called personalities or alters is the detail Billy provided. Each one has their own backstory. The descriptions of the personalities have an interesting effect on people's perception of Billy Milligan. People who believe in DID consider the details to be proof that he really had the disorder. And people who believe he was a con artist find those details support that theory. The questions that come up here, of course, would be, is DID a real disorder, and did Billy Milligan have it? In an attempt to answer those questions, let's first look at some of the unusual items that came up during the time when Billy Milligan was being treated. Item number one, some clinicians believe that Billy had DID, others believed it was schizophrenia or personality disorders. His diagnoses would change periodically because of this. The treatments, of course, would also change to correspond. Item number two, Clinicians who tested Billy's IQ determined that each personality had a different score. The lowest was 69 and the highest was 120. The range was from intellectually disabled all the way up through highly intelligent. Item number three, many clinicians were confused by Billy's presentation. One clinician who treated Billy early on gave him a Rorschach inkblot test. The results were disjointed and confusing, according to the clinician. The Rorschach test is an invalid instrument. It's not often used anymore because it has poor reliability and validity. 
using it to detect the ID is like using magic binoculars to find Bigfoot. Item number four, the behavior of Billy Zalters was inconsistent with the ID. A few examples, Billy's personalities were aware of each other and communicated with one another. Billy would threaten to call upon violent personalities to handle situations for him. So he kind of used the personalities to threaten people. The core personality, which was Billy, was partitioned from the others. So Billy was kind of separated. The other alters knew about each other, but Billy was somehow off in the distance. That really doesn't make any sense based on the understanding of DID. The personalities appear to share memories. Switching between alters was characterized by dramatic facial expressions and movements and primarily occurred when being interviewed by clinicians as if Billy was putting on some type of show. Item number five, one of the clinicians who diagnosed Billy with DID and kind of led the whole charge in this direction was Cornelia Wilbur. Wilbur tried to treat Billy by telling him to combine certain personalities right at that moment. That was it. She just said combine them right now. That was her sophisticated treatment strategy. This could be added to her other amazing treatment strategies, like for depression, she could say, sadness no more, and for anxiety, feel calm right now. A patient of Wilbur's named Shirley Mason was the inspiration for a famous book titled Sybil. It was later made into a TV movie. The book Sybil greatly contributed to an increase in the number of DID cases that were diagnosed. In 1958, Shirley Mason admitted that she had been lying the whole time. She never had multiple personalities. Wilbur encouraged the author of Sybil to leave that information out of the book. Cornelia Wilbur would not be exposed as a fraud until 20 years after she died. By this time, she had poisoned several generations of mental health clinicians with her nonsense. Item number six, some of Billy's alters claim to be able to speak languages that Billy would have never been able to know. In reality, Billy Milligan could not speak, read, or write any other language other than English. In one instance, Billy asked another patient who could write Arabic to write a letter for him. On another occasion, when confronted by someone who could speak a foreign language that one of the altars supposedly could speak, Billy switched to another altar. So moving back to those questions, is DID real and did Billy have it? As far as DID being real, many clinicians think of DID as a fantasy that was created by clinicians who really needed to feel special about their profession. The definition is murky and inconsistently applied in clinical practice. I have met clinicians who have practiced for 10, 20, 30 years and never seen one case of DID or even anything like it. And other clinicians who claim that half of their caseload is made up with people with the disorder. Interestingly, many of the people develop the disorder after starting treatment with that clinician. Research studies have not supported the idea that DID exists. Researchers have been unable to replicate studies where real cases were differentiated from simulators. Essentially, there is no way to tell the difference between a real case and someone faking it. Studies have shown an inter-identity transfer of information in people diagnosed with DID. This should be impossible if the disorder is real. We see a tremendous overlap between DID and borderline personality disorder, suggesting that perhaps DID is really a specific expression of borderline. The research against the idea of DID doesn't mean that DID is not real. It just means there is no way to prove it scientifically. DID symptoms appear to occur in people from time to time, but the construct of the disorder itself doesn't hold together. There is no such thing as having multiple personalities as conceptualized with DID. Perhaps there is dissociation and behavior which simulates multiple personalities, but the disorder again doesn't hold together. Research in this area needs to continue to find an acceptable framework to understand those symptoms. Looking at the next question, did Billy Milligan have DID? No, not in my opinion. Did Billy Milligan have DID? No, not in my opinion. Billy's behavior better aligns with all four of the cluster B personality disorders, antisocial, narcissistic, borderline, and histrionic. Also, I think he was just plain lying. 
He was an artistically inclined and creative con artist who behaved in a way to please clinicians and to escape responsibility. Those clinicians became unwitting conspirators. Billy exposed the unscientific side of the mental health profession as well as the criminal justice system and proved that no one is immune to fantasy. The gullibility and arrogance of multiple mental health professionals disrespected the victims and perpetrated the myth of DID. Those are my thoughts on the case of Billy Milligan. Please put any opinions and thoughts. What do you guys think? Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn the bell on if you're feeling risky. Become a channel member, it starts at 99 cents. You get a shout out in every single video. You get early access to my videos and many more other perks. Thank you so much for watching this video as always and goodbye.